Councillor Zamprogno. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Look, I'm disappointed that this has returned to the Chamber in the blunt uh, binary way in which it has. Uh, to, to be clear, I am in favour of reforming our land management practices as they relate to fire safety. And it, 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 again, it's worth pointing out that our starting point here is that there were 65 homes that were lost in our LGA in the Gospers Mountain Fire. And that imposes a strong moral obligation on us to do something, but certainly not like this. When this came to the chamber in mid-October, the policy had been in the public domain for all of a couple of weeks. The staff recommendation at the time listed numerous reasons for caution, including, and I quote, it can be assumed that there will be differences of opinion within the community. It would be prudent to understand the views and considerations of the community and to conduct a public consultation process. This motion manifestly is not interested in public consultation. Now, the motion that I advanced in October, or rather the amendment that eventually passed, laid out a clear path to conduct that public consultation, including with the local RFS, who informed me at the time that they had not been asked and which they had. For example, they pointed out to me things that I did not know, like there was nothing in the code about the windrows. In other words, people who, if they cleared their land under this policy and left all of the debris piled up and let it dry, it would create an, an entirely new <clears throat> hazard. So councillors, and councillors would be aware, as Councillor Wheeler pointed out, of representations from members of uh, Bilpin RFS, who are in a position to know, uh, expressing their own caution about this. Now, I am informed that subsequent to our motion in October, that those public consultations were, were ready to get underway in February. The motion that we did pass tasked council to establish which other councils have adopted this code, because at the time there were none that we were aware of and how that, what that experience looked like for them was unknown. I think that would inform our debate. The motion that we, that we did pass <coughs> tasked council to investigate acquiring the geospatial and mapping tools required to evaluate tree cover and changes to that tree cover on a per property basis. Tools that are readily available. And I gave examples of vendors who have those tools because I saw them demonstrated at the local government conference. We still don't have those tools, but I am told that that investigation is underway. Why wouldn't we permit council to do that investigation? So it would be really irresponsible for us to implement a substantial new land clearing code with no resources devoted to compliance and enforcement. As I said at the time, what we can't measure, we can't establish the impact of. And lastly, council still does not have access to the RFS's own mapping tool, which they promised would be one way in which property owners could be guided as to their eligibility. We still don't know what it looks like. We still can't even trial it or give it a spin and see whether it's a useful tool or not. The code tells people to self-assess their eligibility, but it also warns landowners that they need to seek professional advice about the score of exclusions that apply based on the species of trees present, wildlife habitats, site slope, soil erosion, landslip risk, Aboriginal and cultural significance, the presence of watercourses, adjacent zonings, or the presence of 13 different ecological communities, not to mention varying restrictions surrounding the use of herbicides, chain clearing, burning and landowner consent. This motion is silent on what resourcing will be available to assist landowners to in navigate that minefield. The motion is silent on what we do for the 1,800 houses for people that live in E4 zones uh, where that uh, would not apply. This motion is silent on all those concerns. So when I described the motion in October and you know, as naive and simplistic, it would appear that nothing has changed. This motion simply bluntly calls for the adoption of the code with no consultation. And as a member of the Liberal Party, I am disappointed that we can't be more respectful, more nuanced about our approach to some really important policy issues. As I have said before, it is possible to be both a good conservative and a good conservationist, but clearly this motion is not a pathway 
to that end. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you.